We are in Prague in the year of the coronavirus. Specifically, we're in a hostel, but why are we in a hostel in Prague? Because there is an art studio down there. We're gonna check out who is there. All right, cluster gallery. I'll have to, hello? Is anybody in there? Yeah. Oh, we totally didn't. <laughs> it's Lucas, hey. Hi. Hi, it's good to, good to actually meet you. With, well, let's close the door, it's getting a little cold. Um, yeah. It's good to meet you after our chat only about a month ago. That's right. As promised, here we are recording, documenting your actual studio. Let me just get a pan going on over here. First of all, I, well, obviously the intro was a bit staged. We have to reveal that because I don't want to lie to the viewers. But uh, <laughs> I, one thing I noticed earlier was that the place smells lovely. Oh, How would you describe this smell? I can't smell it anymore. It's all over me. When I go to visit people, they say, oh, I love it when you come in because you smell of turpentine. And <laughs> it's got to be the turpentine because the other I don't even, you know, I don't want to sound too ignorant, but I don't even know what turpentine is. <laughs> it cleans the brushes and it ah. thins the paint so you can do... I'm going to take this. You want to help me with the sleep? Just, uh, I'm going to take this off because... Okay. All right, meanwhile, here's some more of your paintings. I'll take it from here. All right, so uh, this is gonna be great. This is a long take. So for those of you who haven't seen any of the long takes in the, in, that I previously recorded, uh, this is an uncut conversation, a meeting with an artist. And uh, you, this, is, this is a fantastic piece right here. Let me just get a shot of it, a proper shot of it. What can you tell me about this one here? I love it. Okay, so uh, I'm, a, I'm also a drummer. I play drums. I yeah. had the, uh, you know, the amazing, uh, uh, to play at the Jazz Dock in Prague. It's a jazz club. And, yeah, Jazz uh, Dock, yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I play there a couple of times as a fill-in drummer with a number of bands, which is wow. terrifying. Because Especially when, jazz. They call you like two days before the gig and say, hey, can you, you know, can you do the show? So it's a, it's a perspective from the drummer. So you've got, you know, the right symbol is the most important in the jazz thing. So he's, and uh, I imagined I kind of, I dreamt up this idea that I was playing with some of the, the greats of jazz. So McCoy Tyner on the piano. Oh, passed away today. I was going to say... Or yesterday, yeah. Know about that already? Yeah. I know. Um, Another great of the golden age. Oh, yes. Gone. And so the thing is, last night, I was listening to Afro Blue, which is with <sighs> yeah. Coltrane, John Coltrane's Afro Blue. And this is the actual pattern. Uh, well, it's the, the drum pattern, you could say the... Da -da 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 so those... Um, musical notes I've painted here these vertical lines correspond with the way it's written on the paper so you got this da 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 right right yeah yeah so um that's how this is uh, composed that's the first part you draw the lines you get it all in there you start putting in the, the instruments and the, the, the different players <clears throat> I could play it to you. You got the drumsticks in hand. Let's I see. Got a drumstick here. Hey, so here you said that you're a drummer. You actually have a corner in your art studio with the drums, of course. and you're gonna play the drum pattern that this painting this is, yeah. is basically based on. Yeah, exactly. So here we go. This is what it sounds like. We can start on the cowbell. Let's start. Let, I'm gonna start. Let, maybe play the first time. I'm just gonna look at you, and then I'm, you do the whole thing again, and I'm gonna be looking at the painting. Okay, okay, okay. So that pattern. Da, 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 da. Whoa! 
All right, do it again and I'm gonna get a shot of the painting as you play it. Because it's visual representation, basically. got some drumming chops too. That's not an easy beat to play. Mm, it's yeah. not your 4-4. Four four. <laughs> it's a polyrhythmic. You've got the 6 against 4 and the 3 against 2. Tell me about the, the colors in the painting. Because I remember in our conversation you had some interesting concepts about color. So let's use this painting as an example great, great. to express your uh, those okay. some of those concepts or your ideas about color. Okay, okay. So one of the things I learned years ago was when you mix two complementary colors, the red and the green, you get this dark, dark gray color that you see down here. And when you add a little bit of white to it, it, it softens it up and you get these mid-tones, these other grays. So most of the painting was made with these two colors. Right. Then when you bring in a little bit of lemon yellow, which is also a very cool color. It, it pulls everything down into, um, let's say, it, the temperature is cool, which kind of, I feel it relates to jazz music a lot. This is not, they're bright colors, but they're not, um, they're not like your primary colors like you know fire engine reds yeah. or like, you're not gonna find these colors in a mcdonald's probably you're not right yeah well why why wouldn't you though right um because because I, mcdonald's uses uh what type of colors they use just well, the primary colors usually associated yeah. with the way kids, kids like. yeah they'll go for you know the cobalt blue and the cadmium yellow and this you know what i call what is this one i don't know Cadmium red, rouge red. Yeah, so this doesn't use any of these colors. These are all cooler, neutralized colors. Because once you get them all mixed together, they, they create these nice, rich, uh, neutral tones. Hmm. Yeah, because if you go a little closer and film it in detail, there is a lot going on here in terms of color. Uh -huh. um, like barely a millimeter has the same tone of color and the same type of mm -hmm. color. It's actually cool to look at it from the end, from up close too. Yeah. Do you have like a structure in mind or like a, uh, do you have a plan when you start doing it or do you just start painting on a canvas? Was there a first version that was in a sketch pad somewhere? And do you keep yeah. your sketch pads? Yeah, yeah, I sketch this out first. I have done a few pieces in the past that had this theme, you know, uh -huh. like jazz drummers and bass players and pianos because you know the shapes and the forms are just so sexy and cool you know these bass clef things and the scroll at the top which is based on the different iterations of the Fibonacci the so Fibonacci yeah so I remember you telling me about that that's a concept that you that inspires you too right yeah exactly because I remember being shown it like in, in school where the teacher said okay so you got this to this it's the same as this to this and then that to that is the same as this to this and basically it's all across the Vitruvian man yeah right the Vitruvian man for mm -hmm. those who don't know the Vitruvian so, man google it you're in the google age so <laughs> it's like when a, a wave crashes at the sea yeah. That barreling shape it makes, that's not a circle. It's not based on a platonic circle. It's actually, if you curl your fingers like this, that shape it makes is yeah. uh, a Fibonacci curl, like a Fibonacci wave. I was telling you earlier when I, when I saw the painting is that, uh, and also your work, I see, uh, I, I noticed similarities with the works of the uh, futurists. Uh, Gerardo Dottori is one of my favorite painters. He was a futurist, an Italian futurist from the 1910s and 20s, that era. Uh, there's a lot of movement in their paintings and a lot of color, experimentation with color, which really sought to capture 
modernity. And uh, actually, uh, I believe that uh, some may refer to the music that you just described as modern jazz. So it's no longer the traditional jazz, it's getting into the modern age. So mm -hmm. I love it, man, I love it. What else can you show me from around, from your studio here? Oh, We've got a lot going on. Boy, there's a lot of Actually, there is another one about jazz there. Yes, that's Miles And Davis. it's different, and it's a different style. So this is from a uh, previous era of yours, right? Yes, yes, this is a little bit more, um, uh, what would you say, these tones are all a kind of conservative, <clears throat> except for that blue, the electric blue that's on them, this ultramarine blue, just to make them sort of pop out a bit. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just, you know, burnt umbers and uh, reds and, yeah. So to see the contrast there. What? First of all, do you have a title for the, this new one here? Oh, I think I will dedicate it to the recent passing of McCoy Tyner. There you go. Because it was, oh, okay, so this is what happened. L last night, I'm listening to Afro Blue, which I just played on the drums loosely. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking, oh my God, this song is incredible because it's a live, the live version from Birdland is yeah. so powerful. My drum teacher, Nick Sassir, back in Australia years ago, he said to me, that recording, that Birdland recording of Afro Blue is thunderous. If you were sitting in that jazz hall at that room in that time, and when that was recorded, your socks would be blown off. He's so, he's just smashing it. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Um, so I listened to it last night, just because I remembered, you know, this what the whole painting is about, this rhythmic thing. Yeah. So I'm listening to it, and I noticed the first solo in the song is the piano. Uh -huh. It's not the sax. It's not, you know, right. it, it's, they go straight to McCoy Tyner's solo. It's a brilliant solo, by the way. And I, I thought of that last night, like, wow, that is interesting that they went straight to the pianist solo. And then, you know, I found out this morning that he died last night. Yeah. So I'm thinking... Does this, is there a connection here? There is could the, be. Like, did he... Do you believe in that type of connection? He, he just passed and he felt his way into the painting or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's like um, a kind of uh, Oscar Wilde thing. Maybe I killed him. Ooh. <laughs> well. Like a Dorian Gray thing. I understand what you're saying, though. But for sure, whether it is actually his spirit in this painting... It's his energy in this painting because he, he definitely inspired it in one very real way. And that's something yes. that anyone I think can believe in. The passing of energy and just how energy is transformed. That's really a cool way to put it as well, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I want to do with my work. I don't want this to be about, I don't know, just, I've, I see a lot of people painting themes like this, like jazz and cubistic things, but what is their connection to it? Do they yeah. know anything about jazz? Or yeah. is it just the lines that they like, you know, or the, the smoky room or the, the shape of the saxophone? I don't know, I find it a bit superfluous. Whereas I think to actually put the rhythm into the piece um, yeah. and my own dream about playing with these kind of guys, it's, um, so yeah, I'm part oh, of me is in it, but. Right. It's also a hats off to them. It's a, it's a, it's a respect to those, the shoulders of the giants we step up on, sit upon. Giant We've steps. got a, a, I'm, I'm just, this is where, is this where you paint? So Man, just, on a normal day. I just bought these new paints. All right. They're yes. cool. I mean, one of the things that I told you is that your studio is very neat and tidy. I mean, uh, it's not as messy as most other studios that I go and film, mm -hmm. um, but I love it. You know, if you got everything. So this is this where you paint, or do you? What 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 would you do? Yes. Let's say on a normal day of painting, where do you where do you paint? This is it. This is. This oh right. Is where I drive the ship. So, but I also, you know, I might take. I'll bring some pictures as references. Oh right. So uh, you've got your pictures here. Yeah, lots of pictures to work from. You know, landscapes and just different, you know, buildings and architecture and uh, oh, it's just endless. So what kind of influences come into these pieces? Here's a good one that I've often used as inspiration. This is the moment when Matthew McConaughey's character in Interstellar uh -huh. is 
pulled into the five dimensional tesseract. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. All right. I so, see how that would influence you too, being in this room, you know, stuff, imagery like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you can see it on this piece behind us if you want to take a look at that. Uh, this blue one. This oh, one. right. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, That's cool. I remember. I think maybe you sent me a photo of this one, an image of this one while I was yeah, there. Yeah, likely. That's likely. Um, this is, uh, the, come on, this is a very, I mean, it looks like I wouldn't have the mind to actually make this come to life on the canvas. I, I think looking at a piece like this, I'm fascinated by how you are able to actually put it on there, like a physical real thing. Right. In what mind do you need to do that? That is complex. Uh, it, <laughs> it took hours just to draw it onto the canvas, like with the you know, pencil and a ruler and yeah. one of my students was hanging out with me. I got a few painting uh, students. And so he, we, we had to figure it out. We didn't have the, like there's no guidebook that says how to draw in five dimensions. Yeah, right. You know, it, there's, no, there's no way to do it um, without just, just doing it yourself, figuring out, okay, well, um, uh, uh, this, this one explains it a little bit better. Whoa. Yeah, this is like the library spun into the same ah. uh, five-dimensional space. You can see that uh, like a line that comes out of here also connects to this one, and this comes through here. So all space is connected. All space is connected. All of them are connected. They all have some... Like, they even appear to bend. This line here, for example, seems to bend at the end. But I see it. doesn't. It's just a trick of the eye, the illusion of the space that the line is going through. That's so. cool. Is that, a, is that a, an, a, an actual place that you're using as a reference? That one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the Clementine on... Life. Oh, right. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, tell me, let, let's chill out for a second. Tell me about this studio. Where did you, where, so how long have you been in here? Oh. Meanwhile, I'll have, a, I'll have a sip of the beer. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> uh, to the coronavirus. <laughs> mm. There's no viruses here. And no viruses here. Yeah. Um, how long have you been here in, in the studio? In this so it's in Prague and it's uh, in a hostel. 20 minutes. Part of a hostel. Uh, yeah, it's part of a hostel. Um, I, I guess I made an, uh, an agreement with the manager to paint upstairs throughout uh, the building. Yeah. Like murals. He said, oh, I want the place to look like those hostels in Berlin. <laughs> and just, just, you know, use all of your influence, influences to, to create different styles throughout yeah. the hostel. So it kind of looks like a dozen different artists have worked throughout the, the hostel. Yeah. And so, yeah, I get, I've used the space here as a platform to, you know, be inspired and then go upstairs and work on the murals. Uh, it's yeah. a really sweet thing you got going on here because I think it's a very nice, nice studio here. So uh, how, how long did you say you have been in, in here? Um, um, seven months. Seven months, wow. Mm -hmm. And where were you before? Because um, did you have a studio somewhere else in the city here in Prague? Because uh, you've been in Prague for a few years now. Right? Yeah, but typically I've used, you know, the kitchen sink and the table and yeah, the yeah. dining room. And it makes a difference to have your place, right? This yeah. studio where you can work, right? Yeah, plus you get certain breathing problems if you're painting in your house. It's you not, do? You, well, it's not good to sleep. Oh, right. Exist and eat in the same place where you're painting. Big time, yeah. big time. Yeah, so you're right about that. It's dangerous in this place. It is, yeah. It's wild down here. What would you say is your oldest piece that's hanging up on the wall right now? Ooh, okay. Uh, I would say this one up here. This one up here. How? When? When would you say you painted this one? Oh, like three years ago. Three years three, ago. Yeah. Everything else is 
yeah, post three. One years. thing I remember you telling me in our conversation for the long chats, for up for, for, for my art chats, not the long chats, uh -huh. um, was that you always look at your work and you almost feel like you never finish them. Huh. They remain a little bit unfinished. What was that quote I heard recently about the writers? The writers, they never really finish a book. They just abandon it. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Now looking at your painting from three years ago, do you ever look at it and say that I could add a little something there? Uh, yes. Yes. You yes. do? <laughs> there's, there's things I learned last night while painting the, the jazz piece, this dedication to McCoy Tyner piece. There's a few things I learned from that about motion that I think could work well in this piece. Maybe to get the yeah. buildings dancing a little bit more. All oh, right. Uh, so when we look at a piece like this and look at a piece like this that you have just painted, we notice an evolution in style. Maybe there you're experimenting with stuff that is clearer there, right? There is a link between the two, the two paintings. I hope so. I hope there's an evolution from one to the other. Yeah. I can see it in the quality of the paints. Like these new uh, oil colors were the best I could buy. Like the most uh, buttery, the most well, expensive, but also the most um, pigment. They yeah. are just so rich. You you try to squeeze the paint out of the tube, and it's like a it's a it's a little bit of a battle. Is it? Yeah. I, I don't. I wouldn't know about that. Like how how do you mean? What, so there is a difference. But yeah, I mean, I always knew that there was a difference, but like oh, maybe you can describe it in a way that's more real and. Uh, well, we could physically do it. Uh, hmm. This is a cheap fifty crowns or two dollars oil color. I just give it a little push and the paint just plops out uh -huh. and it's a, it's a lot more, there's a lot more oil in it, right. which makes it cheaper. But something like this, I have to actually give it a big push before actually the paint comes out. Oh, so right. There's, that just means it's loaded with pigment so that when you take a little tiny, tiny drop of it, and then apply it to the canvas. Where do we need some orange right now? Maybe here on the symbol. It just runs and runs and runs. I can do an entire spot like that. And here, and there's still more to go around. Wow. It just keeps going. Where else do we need some orange? I was gonna put some here on the base. See, it just, it never gives up. So that's the difference in the quality of the paint. Maybe we should do an advertisement for these guys. <laughs> no, no, let's not do an advertisement. But you know what I was thinking while you were doing that is maybe you could live stream yourself painting. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? Live streaming? Yeah. Uh, um, while you paint, you just keep your camera on and you just live stream your painting and people check in and out. Ooh. I don't know if anyone is doing that, but I just uh, realized that it would be a really cool idea. Yeah, but I paint naked. So. You do? No. Yeah? Oh, right. <laughs> hey, man, that would have been cool. I know I'm friends with a filmmaker who absolutely, you know, whenever, whenever he doesn't have to be in public, is always naked. I can't say his name, but he wouldn't mind, but, uh, but uh, he's, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, I feel like uh, nakedness is, uh, uh, I am of the opinion that if people didn't wear any clothes, it'd be a lot easier to hang out with each other and we wouldn't be so worried about everything. Oh, yeah. But anyways, I don't know why I'm saying so, uh, right, what else have we got? What else do we have? We have this Hopf. Oh yeah, okay, so finally seeing it in the... Now tell me again about the Hopf. Because the Hopf is a really cool story, and now that we have actual video, yeah, now it's well worth going back to it. It's still very difficult to explain, though. But I will do my best. Try, yeah, let's, let's try it, let's see. Because we have... Okay, so we have in our normal everyday universe we have three dimensions which is you know up <laughs> cross and back or forward and so from those three things you can make for example uh, a box a cube you know a three-dimensional thing but in this case 
uh, what is going on is we are now extending that arm into a higher space, hmm. which means imagine if one of those um, lines that I just drew could sort of pass through all the other ones. Yeah. You know, it could go back through that one, but it's also at the front here. So it's, it can kind of twist and move throughout that three-dimensional space. That's what's happening here. It's um, the hop is a ball, three-dimensional ball, but then every single point on the ball uh, can be turned into a circle, which then turns around and through itself. That's the best way I can explain it. It's a higher dimensional ball. Yeah, it's a higher dimensional ball. Mm -hmm. And here we see it because there's a lot. You, you, you illustrate that concept, basically. This, at least uh, that concept was a st an important starting point for it. Or how, so how do you illustrate it? Like, for example, the, the, the circular thing that, that always goes around and around, we see it there, right? Mm -hmm. But you mentioned that you, nobody had really, no artist had really done it before. Yes, yes. Um, so that's right. I heard it on a podcast or discussion between um, Joe Rogan and Eric Weinstein. And this is actually a, an image that Eric showed Joe. Uh -huh. uh, what episode was that? 100 and 200,000? Oh, we can look it up. Um, yeah, so it's like a map of the Earth. You can see the continents in there. And they're all spinning around. This, like, if you just follow that yellow one, it's, it can pass through itself, go around. This green one can pass through itself, uh -huh. goes around. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that's the best way to explain it. And uh, so when Joe was clearly amazed the way this thing was moving and, and fluid, which is, that's the, the beauty of something in a higher dimension. It can pass through itself and move around. We can't do that in our space, you know. Yeah. We, we, it's, it's, it's even really difficult to draw it or to perceive it. And that's why Eric, you know, he, he made that point to Joe, you know, this is not a very common image to find, at which point I decided, okay, right. I'm going to paint that. I would love to, I would love to try to paint that. So I did. And uh, I put it on Instagram. And two weeks later, I get a phone call or an email, same thing. From Physics Today magazine, yeah. and they said, "Hey, did you do this? Is this your? Are you the author of this? The, you're, um, we we'd like to put it in our magazine because uh, we we're doing a story about topology, and your painting represents exactly what we're talking about." And I said, "Oh yeah, of course." So it's like February edition, two thousand nineteen, Physics Today magazine. Yeah. Awesome. I also then just recently thought about the idea of hashtagging Eric Weinstein into the image and I got a, a message from him directly saying, Hey, well done on the on the on the on the, on the painting. Right. So yeah. It's great to get that, you know, to get the approval from the guy who sort of inspired, inspired the piece. Yes. Why? I mean, if someone, if it was so difficult for people to do it, why do you think you were the one to do it? Why do you think you were the one to actually be able, because what I was telling you about that painting over there, yeah. and even this painting over there, mm -hmm. and then now here with this one that apparently had never been really done, or was very difficult at least to find yes. images of this concept. I mean, I'm trying to understand. I feel like these are really complex paintings. Where, how do you think, if you, if you could, what, what, why are you able to do the mask? <laughs> how would you explain that? When I was 16 or 17 mm. years old, uh, I was also studying architectural mm. drawing and design drawing, but yeah. also doing, you know, painting and art. <clears throat> and I discovered these um, uh, Penrose staircases that, uh, MC Escher did where the stairs appear to go up and up and up and then down and it's like 
how can that possibly exist? This is an illusion. Mm. And then you see in Salvador Dali's work, there's all these illusions going on where things can be other things. Yeah. I've just always been interested in those illusions and those little tricks. And I've, over the years, I've just figured out ways to depict those yeah. um, you know. Do you think that there's a reason why you found those fascinating, those illusions, as you say, fascinating? Can I answer that honestly? You can, yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> probably high. You were? But still, I, I feel like, you know, there, maybe there's a, an interest in the illusion, maybe in the playfulness or the possibility that something isn't what it actually seems to, appears to be. Yeah. There's, Do you think that there's a little bit of that? Yeah, I, there's something... Dream. Do, are you influenced by dreams? Yes, I write them down occasionally. And you do? I, uh, f I think I will do that eventually. I'll use some of these skills that I'm learning now, like these cubistic methods and these Baroque methods and even this scientific method and try to figure out a way to depict... Ah, right. Dreams. So none of these works are also influenced by dream in a way? No. So not yet, yeah. Not yet. I think that's somewhere I'd like to go. I think it's taken a long time to get to here. Yeah. So maybe that's the next step and a new evolution. Yeah. Is it diffi do, you, do you keep track of that evolution or is it difficult to keep track of it? Or do you have like a way in which you can keep track of your evolution? Mm. And are you faithful to it? Like this line... Basically, like, you know, like, um, you're aware of where your work is going at all times and you know where you want to go going forward. There's, I go through, it's usually about a six week process. Hmm. So I'll do, you know, these water waves and atmospheric landscapes for six weeks to maybe two months. And then I just, I, I drop it. I find yeah. something else. Uh, and I worked that for another few months and then, you know, and then maybe go back to something else I tried 20 years ago, like this cubistic thing, which I'm doing again for some reason. I'm back yeah. there. All right. But I'm back, as you see from last night. Um, it's more, so basically it's more complex than any linear, linear uh, motion, even when you think about the way in which your, your work has been evolving. It's a lot less linear it's more like you jump back and Jumping forth between back, different grab something from the past and assimilate it with what you know now yeah 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 um you know because I'm, I'm not going to paint these baroque things forever and i'm not going to paint the water and the landscape stuff forever either yeah because i just find other influences fascinating whether it's listening to a science program where you're challenged to I try to identify or represent you know a concept or whether it's just uh, seeing something beautiful like the rose and the is that a lily the flower yeah you know or sometimes you will get a commission from a friend perhaps yeah. who says hey do you know that hop thing that you do oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. he says could you paint that but it's covered in millions of little thc trichomes you know those little furry things if you look at a marijuana bud or the leaf there's that fine white velvety stuff that's where we get the oils from and if you look at it under a microscope we can come take a look at it uh-huh that's what this piece is here all oh, right that's what these are so, whoa okay so those are trichomes they hold the oil that um so all right. extracted and turned into thc oil which is hopefully what people will be smoking more and more of so that it's it's better for your health that you're not burning the whole plant because you don't need to actually smoke all of the carbon and stuff that's in weed you just need to burn the oil Right. To get the high. So he said, why don't you make a... So that was a commission piece. I'll send that off to the US one of these days. Cool. When I finish it. When did you make this? Is it a few oh, months it's ago? It's been ongoing. Just 
Oh, it's still not finished. It's getting there. It's getting there, yeah. Yes, yes. Let's sit down for a second and chill out. Um, sure or let's sit, what, what have you got going on here? This is where you, this is your storage oh, that's section. Where the dead bodies are. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to see some dead bodies. I think uh, YouTube would have blocked me, though, if I had. Uh, you, would, you would see dead bodies. So, yes, we don't want to go in there. All right, so, oh, so do people that. come into this studio and check to check out your work? Do you also use it as a bit of a gallery? Yes, that's why it's so clean. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. That's the only reason it's clean. If yeah. it was my studio, it would be a fucking mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I don't like packing things away and keeping them in their place. Because yeah. when you need it, you can't find it. Do you sometimes work on uh, uh, more than one painting at the same time? Yeah. And you shift from one to the other maybe in the course of the same, I don't know, hour? <laughs> you must, because with oil paint, it, it takes so long to dry. So if it's best to work on two or three pieces at any given time. Oh, right. So that, uh, and then they start spilling over there. One influences the next and one influences the next. So yeah, they, you be, you're creating a body of work yeah, by yeah, yeah. doing that. If you just fo imagine focusing on one painting for say six months, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't, like I said, I can't get past six weeks to two months on just one uh, theme or style before moving on to something else. And do you, um, do you, do you, have something that you put the paintings on it you leave them on the wall like I, you just did there you just kind of painted it a little bit while on the wall you didn't move it yeah yeah uh, that's <laughs> that's my easel ah that's very dynamic sort of uh type of painting so I've, you just look around and you play a bit of drums and you focus on one of the paintings and say oh, I, got, I could do it a bit of red or something like that which i did just before you came i put a bit of yellow on one of the pieces over there Oh, I right. found the right tone and I was looking at another one. Oh, I know where this can go. Yeah. yeah. So they, they all, they are connected in that regard. <clears throat> They're connected. You know, it, it's not like a factory where you're just putting one out. All right, it, it's go, it's out, it's done, it's finished, go sell it. No, I like that they all get to sit here and feed off each other. Now, I know this sounds like we said, this is a great studio that you've got going on here. But if you wanted to go, if there was a place where you would like to go and, you know, maybe see yourself also going to that is in Prague, is, do you have somewhere in mind that you would like to kind of be for a bit and work? Yeah, I think... Uh, so when you hear about the great painters of the past, they all had some sort of a, an exotic place, a lot of them, where they went, mm -hmm. just were inspired for a while and then they left... I think I would like to see the Rift Valley in Africa. I think the Rift Valley extends through a number of countries. Tanzania is one of them. Yeah. The Rift Valley is said to be the birthplace of us. Oh, right. That's where they think we pretty much evolved from. There were the conditions were right there for us to, you know, safely come out of the trees and you know start to walk around and, and gradually leave Africa and populate the planet and, um, and why, do, why, why are you interested in that? Uh, our, it's, it's our original home yeah, it's, yeah. Our, it, it's imagine painting in a place like that where you're like wow so this is this is probably not too dissimilar from our ancestors which it's probably like in terms of time, 250,000 years is not long in terms of, you know, mm. 4 billion years, the planet is that old, 13.7 billion is the age of the universe. So that few hundred thousand years is a scratch of time. It's nothing, but we, we came from it. And Do you think that the world is going to end soon? Our planet will not end soon. No. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't think of, you you don't think the apocalypse is near. Can we you... might fuck ourselves for sure. You know we're just so greedy. We're so 
narcissistic and sociopathic and we elect insanity into our lives um yeah Do, so you think humanity will end before the planet yeah the earth has taken i mean you see what the earth looked like um say a billion years ago when it was cooling down and, you know it was just this ball of lava and then it went through ice ages and then it's been through you know where when the sky uh, the atmosphere was not even you know, there was no oxygen or nitrogen in it. it was a time when it was you know other um compounds so the planet has had the shit kicked out of it, it it's fine it can survive us but i don't know if we can survive ourselves yeah <clears throat> are you as interested in constructive forces as you are in destructive forces i'm like, do you find inspiration in disasters or destruction? It is fun to watch train wreck. <laughs> you ever heard that uh, that piece by George Carlin where he says, "You know what I'm talking about? I love bad news. I love and then, bad news." And then it goes to this, and then they're all screaming, and then everyone has got AIDS, and then they all yeah, then they all have to fly to the moon because everyone's fucked on the planet. And, and the closer the that it, the, the tragedy is, the better it is. Yeah, <laughs> but. Uh, and, Isn't know, it just, funny when you, when we consider the way people are talking about coronavirus? Mm -hmm. I, I immediately, the moment when I realized that was a big thing, I immediately went to revisit that, and I was like, "Man, this bit never ages." I'm gonna watch that again soon. <laughs> I, I love George Carlin. Um, so you are destruction. You you find in some inspiration in that too. Yeah, but I don't depict it usually in oh, right. work. I don't think I don't. There is enough depiction of destruction on the news. Yeah. And in popular culture. I you don't. use its energy to inspire the work and mm -hmm. yourself and maybe impact the motions. Because we've been talking about movement too when you work, when you paint. I mean, are you aware of your body while you paint? Or is it uh, like, a, do you just go on autopilot? I mean, I don't know if I'm making any sense of this, but <laughs> the physicality of the painting. Some painters are were very active in their painting. Pollock was uh, is a perfect example right, of that. Right. Right, yeah. Um, I, the only thing I can think of with that regard is often I spend a lot of time back here. Huh. So physically you are working here, uh. you know, but you do spend a lot of time back on one of these squares here. And there's moments where you turn around and go, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And I've actually, I have had moments at three o'clock in the morning where I've turned a little skip. And yeah. Little, yes! Yes! Speaking of which, what are your favorite times of the day to work? Or what are your favorite times of the night to work? Do you have moments where you notice the inspiration just flows mm. much easier and you feel more creative? Now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Over the time it's so like I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you can I uh, any time after nine from nine till three, so that's this is a six hour period I think. So this is your moment of creativity. It's perfect, yes. This is your moment of creativity. This wow. is when it's the world goes silent and you this know. is the same concept that George Gershwin had, speaking of jazz, I suppose. Okay. Although some people would uh, reluctantly put him in that category. I don't understand why. He felt, he felt this was the best time to work for the same reason. The world goes quiet and, yeah. uh, and that's, there's something beautiful about it. It's easier to concentrate and so on. It's not likely someone's going to call you, although actually that's not true because if I get a phone call from Australia, uh -huh. it's usually around 11 oh, o'clock at yeah. night. Oh, yeah, right, because you're from so, Australia. Yeah. yeah. So right. Do you ever go back there? Do you go back there a lot? I go back occasionally, you know, if someone dies or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this, is fa this has been fascinating. Is there anything else that you'd like to show me in this studio that you want to document and mm, some of your thoughts? No. Uh, <laughs> You know, we could talk forever about some of these. Um, maybe have a quick look at this one, because I think you'll find something hmm. different about this piece. Yeah, well, in, in immediately I see the, there is color, but it's less yes, immediately notable. It's, it's there, it's but more, it's... How would you say that? Well, what's the word you would use to describe it? Well, right down in here, 
And up here, I cut these pictures out of a, I don't know, a oh, magazine yeah. or something. I just, so it's a little piece of Prague and the castle in Prague. And from sticking those together, I thought, how can I unify these two positions by drawing them enough that they can connect? Hmm. So using a bit of shellac and pencil and ink and no, no, no paint. No, no paint? No paint this time. This is just um, mostly drawing stuff like charcoals and graphite, pencils. A little bit of acrylic white on there, I think it was, but not really paint. It's not a painting. This is a, and a lot of multiple perspectives. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. A lot of perspective points. Um, awesome. Thank you very much, Lucas. It's been fascinating. It's been fascinating. Hey, so if people are interested in your work, is there any way that they keep in touch with you, can keep in touch with you and all that stuff? I mean... Any way that you, anywhere you update. I noticed that you are also... Oh, do you know what these are? Should I light them? Ah, there oh, are. now, there you go. I knew that there was something else that we could talk about. Yeah. I saw you, I saw a video where you sort of illustrate this process here. Tell me about these. These are, are tiles. They're just tiles. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And see, uh, I think I mentioned that I was a landscape painter at some point. Uh, yeah. It was the way I learned to paint, was to do these basic color abstractions with just two colors, the blue and the brown, a little bit of white, which is technically not a color, a little bit of lemon yellow. It's an easy way to get people started painting. And if uh, anyone wants to come around, I'll show them how to do it. Because the blue, creates a dark color that's cool and mm. the cool colors recede and the brown which is warm because that burnt umber has a lot of red in it 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 warms up so it's a it's a painting about feeling these they have feeling yeah. to them i think it's uh, yeah yeah and it's, uh, it's painting on a tile surface i mean obviously uh -huh. that makes a, a different process as well right it adds something to it Yes, well, um... The, what other surfaces do you paint on? <laughs> Apart from, so we talked about walls, and maybe we could have even have, take a shot of something that you painted even just out, out here of something, because just to give an idea, you've got tiles, obviously you've got ordinary surfaces yes. <laughs> for paintings, and is there anything, what's the weirdest thing that you painted on? Um, uh, well, have you done... Um, upstairs? Oh. We could have a quick run through the building. Let's have a quick run through the building. Yes. Why not? I'm gonna put on the jacket though. Mm -hmm. Take finish <laughs> off the the beer. Sorry about the camera going crazy, folks, but I do not cut. <laughs> That's part of the rule. It's like Dogma ninety five, you know. <laughs> Have a quick run through the building and then we'll say goodbye. I have a quick run through the building. Okay. Um, I need my coat because I'll need my car. Also, just in case there's any other hostels out there that we might want to call or any, any other building that might want to, I don't know, call you to do the same and offer you an even sweeter spot to work on your art. those curtains down there the two girls from uh, The Shining yeah yeah when I, would, I just I see them I, see, I find this really spooky it's always something spooky about hostel hotel corridors and <laughs> yes I don't know what it is about them but well like the ghost that keeps moving the foosball table <laughs> into this position yeah. it's, it's just unbelievable Like every great theater, uh, I'm sure this hostel has some ghost stories. Of course. Oh, well, these be painting, I mean, buildings at these size, there has to be a ghost. Otherwise, it's just, it's almost as if it didn't exist at all.
it starts here. So it starts here. Oh look, people can find my Instagram. This is <laughs> People are interested to follow my work. They can find Glucose Hay on Instagram. Hashtag Glucose Hay. So here we go. All right. So this is where it starts. This is where it starts. You just get a wider shot, and all right. So we have a typical Prague. What are you using to to paint it? Uh, so so pencil. These. This is ink. Some paint. I found some paints downstairs in the studio when I moved in, like seven oh, months ago. Yeah. I found all this stuff. I was like, wow, we can use all of this. <gasps> all right, so it's, is it paint that is different from the one that you would use? Obviously, yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's like for like walls and... House paint. Right, exactly, yeah. Uh, yes, hey, you can see it. And better. this is a stylized vision of Prague. Yes, yes, with pencil. Uh, graphite, charcoal, ink. It's fighting, I think. <laughs> We've got here. What's this here? Okay, so these are Klein bottles. More four dimensional. A little bit like a Mobius. Wow! Love them! And they're... Uh, That's cool! I thought, you know, good to paint Prague Castle. So it's got motives of Prague Castle just twisted into these uh, higher dimensional things. I thought it'd be an idea to give the hostel guests some, something to dream about. Yeah, I like it. It's the Prague Castle twisted into some type of yes. vortex-like thing. Coming down, and back around. Ah, I love it. I love it. And this here? This one as well. Yeah, it's the same. Amount. Get a nice shot. Just, I want to get the the detail here too because I mean, yeah, they're quite. There's a lot going on here too. Yes. It's almost like um, it makes it look sort of modern. There, there's a, I don't know, there's a, there's a, it's a it almost turns into some sort of a machi modern machinery. Oh, I like that, especially with that gothic, the gothic approach. Yeah, yeah, there's a nice blend of influences in there. Gothic. It was interesting when I was painting it because I had three colors, purple, green, and orange which are the three secondary colors. Remember we talked about primaries? Yeah, yeah. Which is red, yellow, blue. I didn't have red, yellow, and blue. I had green, orange, and purple. I mixed them up together in different iterations. Right. That's what created this. <clears throat> cool. The orange, the green, and purple mixed together. So nice. It's got a different sort of uh, muted feel to it. Yeah. There's nothing that really stands out in that primary sense. Like, hey, look at me, I'm red. Sure. Okay, so there's, uh, there's this one. Oh, it's another style again. Yeah, yeah, They're all different styles. That's what they wanted. So I started with this red box. Yeah, you were so, sort of integrated into so the, yeah, the piece. Yeah, I started with the red around it. Ah, and I it see. splashed out from there. So you look at the wall first and see if there's anything that you can work with or around and actually use it in the piece in a way because it's almost like the flames here are inspiring the... Yes, exactly. So you gotta work with whatever you have. Whatever yeah. you, you know, otherwise, if you start painting, you know, a city scene or something, it won't make sense if there's a big red box in the middle or this fire escape thing. So thought, how can I use that and just splash out from there? Uh, these flower ornamental shapes and these girls dancing. Dancing girls, yeah, you got leaves and what's a lot going on here. Very nice.
the first one that you did? Yeah. What's going on here? Well, I haven't finished it yet, but I wanted it to look like a scene where the guests are in the hostel and they're having breakfast and, you know, there's, um, charging their phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you use there? Is that marker or no, still paint? Yeah, I, I just, someone said, why don't you go get a black marker? You shake the marker and you can just draw straight onto it. How does it feel to draw on a wall? Because, I mean, again, I'm going back to surfaces, but I, I'm, I always had a... I rarely got to do it, but I remember last time I did it, I was a child and I loved doing it. I wonder if that's still true. <laughs> I, uh, it's especially strange to do it on someone else's wall. <laughs> It's just like, yeah, because you're always told not to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost a, an act of rebellion in itself. So there's a, well, that's it. And there's a lot of corridors here. The These are all going to be filled. They're going to be filled. This, this, hey, this, this hostel might be worth, you know, one day it might be worth a lot of money. <laughs> hey, people will come to see the park. Sure. Ah, oh, we got more going on here. Uh, there's a, there's some text going on here. Oh, I wrote about the... Um, 1918, World War I ended, and Czechoslovakia was born a free country. It was announced from the balcony of this building. This building here, and so on. I don't know if you want to read the whole thing, but... So it's inspired by the municipal house. Yes, yes, because there's some great tile artworks in there. Hmm. In, yeah, in, there is. And the tiles inspired this design. Uh, the tiles, okay, so tile painting influenced the design of this yes. piece here. Yes. And you can kind of, you can kind of see it now that you say that. You can kind of okay. see. You can see some of the There's blocky sort of uh, patterns and... Yes. And there's something about these muted colors again from this Art Nouveau time. Yeah. So one of those artists was Mucha. Oh yeah, I love him. For that building, the municipal house. Yeah. So it was Mucha and his friends who they used these kind of muted colors in their work. And yeah, I read it to inspire this piece. This is a uh, work in progress. Flows across. Flows. Oh, there's a narrative too. Flows across. And it turns into. Into? Is this. Um, I guess it's, a, it's just a sketch. Of a lot of things put together, yeah, different yeah, perspectives. A sketch of the city. And it's still a work in progress, but you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it would be, and it looks pretty groovy. Yeah, 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 but you don't because you never think, feel that a work is finished. <laughs> I cannot abandon it like this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Burned down, and the Jewish people were blamed for the burning down of Malastrana. Wow. 
all of that waste was pushed into the river and it became uh, it became what is now known as Kampa Island ah. in Prague. All of the waste of that fire fire uh, it turned into Kampa Island. Yeah. And here we have water. <laughs> that was my first thought because oh, of the blue. Yeah, the blue. It is, yeah. It's like we have the four elements going on. Maybe we'll have the. The wind blowing the city away. <laughs> yes. This, this is, is the watery, um, yeah. ghost-like version of the teen church in Prague. Or night, too. It's got a certain sound to it. So I think that wind that you just said, the wind is blowing through the lights. Yeah, because as you were saying, movement. You know, there's always a lot of movement in many of your works that I've seen today. Most. Yeah, I think there's something about using those dynamic uh, features, yeah. and movement, but also uh, like just something, a whisper of a suggestion of a building, an implication or an implied yeah. thing. You don't have to do every window. And I like that. See, now, a detail like that. Yes. Is it something that can be explained? Is, is there a story that you might imagine behind it? Or are you just following the vibrations <laughs> of the universe? I think it's got a lot to do with... This is probably my favorite church in Prague, the team church, by far. It's just so... It's got such a history to it. Like, it's a cool perspective because it really does feel as if you're looking down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've given it this... Oh, this, this. It looks like you're you know, you know, just looking at it from my screen, if you look at it there, it, it kind of looks like you're falling, you know, in a way. <laughs> yes, yeah. it goes down forever. Yeah, because you pick up momentum mm -hmm. <laughs> and just drop. Drop, like you've been defenestrated. That's so, cool. Like, that's it. We can wrap it up here. We're going to wrap it up here? Yeah. All right. Would you like any final thoughts? Oh, um, okay. So... What is, what is usually considered a final thought? I don't know, because nobody can ever answer that, and it's probably for the best, but I always like to ask that. <laughs> okay. All right, look, this has been a pleasure. I love what you're doing. I love your studio. I love what you're doing with the building. And maybe the next time we'll, we'll see where, uh, how the work has progressed, and I look forward to it. Yes. In the meantime, thanks very much, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do it again. Bye-bye.